This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1391, Why the Banks Are Out to Get You, by Wanderer of Millennial-Revolution.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I narrate posts from thought leaders in personal finance every single day of the year in 10 minutes or less. For now, let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Why the Banks Are Out to Get You by Wanderer of Millennial-Revolution.com. So over the break, we opened up our email and saw this, quote, Hello and Happy New Year. I'm very much enjoying your book, Quit Like a Millionaire, and have a question regarding Chapter 10, specifically on the ability to purchase index funds without a fund manager. Was this setup and purchase of the index fund referenced in Chapter 10 conducted within or outside of Canada? That is under the How to Steal from Wall Street section, page 98 in my book. I am in Canada and have been informed by my financial institution that I'm unable to purchase index funds individually as I need to be licensed in order to do so. Or the fund was not offered for personal purchasing without a fund manager. Perhaps this was specific to a banking institute named Index Funds, or I did not fully understand the information they provided me. When you have a moment, can you kindly provide further details on how you were able to purchase index funds, or what types of index funds would not require a license to purchase? If there's a specific name or general descriptor I may use to more accurately describe them when inquiring about purchase, that would be appreciated. Thanks in advance, end quote. This thing that your bank told you, which is that you can't purchase index funds without a license, is what we call a lie. And that person who told you this is a liar. Those are the technical terms. I didn't come up with them. This reader's encounter closely mirrors my own when I was starting to invest way back in 2007. When I asked to be moved into passive, low-cost mutual funds, ETFs or exchange-traded funds weren't that popular back then. I was given this song and dance about how that was a bad idea and that their actively managed funds were the only way to get above average returns. When I insisted, the bank employee resorted to outright lies, telling me that the funds I was asking for weren't available to me. I had to bring in a printout from their own website which listed the funds I wanted and only then he relented. But why? Why does the finance industry do this? Well, The finance industry is not here to help you. See, there's this strange misconception that the finance industry is here to, you know, help you with your finances. They aren't. The finance industry is here for one reason and one reason only, to take as much of your money as they can. Whether they do it by signing people up for high interest consumer debt, talking people into taking out loan after loan on their house, or filling people's retirement accounts with high-fee, actively managed mutual funds, their goal is to make sure as much as your hard-earned money falls into their hands as possible. Bank-employed financial advisors will always try to get you to buy their own mutual funds, and the higher-fee products, the better. This is because they get paid a commission based on what funds they put you in. And guess what? The higher the MER, which is management expense ratio on the fund, the higher commission they get paid. So they don't particularly care whether the fund they're putting you in is any good. They just want their cut, their cut of your money. And I didn't name the bank the reader is referring to directly because I don't have to. They all do this, both in Canada and the US. Bank advisors hate index funds. And that's because index funds are a direct threat to their business model. A typical actively managed mutual fund in the U.S. will have an MER of about 1 to 1.5%. In Canada, it's even worse at 2% or more. But a passively managed index ETF like the ones we use in our investment workshop, less than 0.1%. The reason that they're able to offer these for so cheap is twofold. First of all, they don't have to pay a fancy pants manager to pick stocks to buy or sell they just buy the entire index. And secondly, they don't pay a commission to a bank shill to recommend it to you. As a result, those bank shills will not only never recommend index funds, they will actively lie and block you from investing in them. 
because they realize you figured out a very dangerous truth. And that truth is you don't need them. American novelist Upton Sinclair once wrote, it is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends upon his not understanding it. And this is a perfect example of this principle in action. If everyone knew about and used index funds to invest, then bank advisors as a whole would be out of a job. Anyone can buy index funds. Here's the truth. Anyone can buy index funds. You don't need to be licensed and you don't need anyone's permission. All you need is a brokerage account. ETF stands for exchange traded funds. And they're called that because they trade on the same stock market as every other stock out there. So if you can buy a share of Amazon, then you can buy a share of VTI. If you're not sure how, read through our free investment workshop for a step-by-step guide on how to actually do this. And finally, if your bank lies to you, leave. This is a great rule to follow in general. I refuse to do business with liars and so should you. If you walk into your bank and ask them to put your money in index funds, the only appropriate response should be sure and how much. Your money is, and this is super important, your money, not the bank's money, yours. Only you get to decide what to do with it. If instead you get the runaround about why they can't do it or you're not eligible or you're not licensed, your bank is lying and is clearly putting their self-interest above yours. You should not trust a company like this with your money. So get every last cent out from under them as soon as possible. You just listened to the post titled, Why the Banks Are Out to Get You by Wanderer of Millennial-Revolution.com. And hey, if you're still using cable TV at home, you've probably been through lengthy support calls that have left you feeling frustrated. We just talked about this on Saturday's episode, in fact. And if you think it's time for you to cut the cord, but you're worried about missing out on live TV, Fubo TV has got you covered. Fubo TV gives you live TV and on demand, all in one place for less than the cost of cable. You can also easily watch your favorite programs from entertainment to news to sports on your TV or any of your smart devices. Now, for those of you who enjoy watching The Bachelor in the background while cooking or eating dinner, Fubo TV allows you the flexibility to do that anytime and anywhere. And right now, Fubo TV is offering our listeners a free trial and 15% off your first month by going to fubotv.com slash optimal. There are no contracts and you can cancel anytime. Go to fubotv.com slash optimal for 15% off your first month and a free trial. That's fubotv.com slash optimal. Oh man, this article made my blood boil. In general, I like to believe that most people in financial services are not maliciously trying to screw people over. It's possible this bank employee didn't really know the rules or was misinformed or following instructions from a manager. But regardless of the intention here, it's a great example of why we need to educate ourselves on personal finance matters so that we don't find ourselves in these kinds of situations. I was recently talking to a friend who uses a financial planner and was looking for a second opinion on their recommendations. Please note, I am not a financial planner. In addition to fully funding a Roth IRA each year, my friend was also investing $1,000 per month into an after-tax brokerage with his planner. I asked if my friend's employer offered any retirement vehicles and learned that they were contributing 5% to a simple IRA and getting a 3% match. Knowing that my friend was right on the line of two different tax brackets, it made more sense to me to fully fund the simple IRA and lower taxable income with a portion of this $1,000 per month available for investing. So why didn't the planner recommend this? I suspect it's because the planner doesn't manage that simple IRA and so gets no cut from it. When my friend asked if they should increase their simple IRA contribution, the planner said no without offering any explanation. And don't get me started on the portfolio this planner put together. It's mostly invested in index funds, which my friend could easily do themselves. I know there are good financial advisors out there, and I've personally spoken to some flat fee advisors that cringe at stories like this. But these cautionary tales demonstrate how important it is for you to invest in your own financial literacy so you can avoid these kind of conflicts of interest with your money. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day and I'll see you in the Thursday show tomorrow and the last day of 2020 
where your optimal life awaits.